Hey guys, college football update, officially week one. I did not count week zero necessarily, but this is week one. Uh, so let's talk about the action that took place uh, really all weekend. It was phenomenal. Uh, Thursday through Monday, we had college football on. It was so great uh, just to watch it every single day. That was just, it's my Shangri-La. It's just the best. It, it should be that way um, every week, but unfortunately it's not, but just really, really enjoyed it. So uh, uh, as we do every week, we're going to start with Notre Dame and then move on from there. So Notre Dame beats Louisville 35-17. to 17. You know, it was dicey there for a bit. Uh, Louisville was up 14-7. to 7. Uh, Notre Dame comes back. Uh, they go up 21-14 to 14 at half uh, and then are able to, to really hold Louisville to, to three points going forward. So, you know, most people are going to say Louisville's terrible and Notre Dame should have beaten them, you know, 55-3. to 3. Okay, that's fine. I look at it for what it is. Uh, it's it's a it's the first game. It's a way. All these things that I told you last week that Notre Dame has gaps in that they need to fill. Uh, the linebacker position is a concern, and that was obvious in the first two drives when everybody was out of position, gaping holes. You know, Jawan Pass was doing whatever he wanted to do running wise. So were the running backs. You know, Louisville was throwing all kinds of weird looks at 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 the Irish, and they just were not ready for it. Uh, now, we can blame that on the coaching staff, and that's all well and good, but I'm going to blame it on youth. Uh, so, you know, in my mind, they just probably were ready. They just weren't ready necessarily for the speed. So, uh, and Louisville has speed. Don't kid yourself. I mean, look, I don't care if they're going to go 4-8 and eight this year, which is probably what's going to happen. They have some speed. They have athleticism. Uh, they, they can, they can play. They just, they're not necessarily there at all, but, uh, they, they certainly have some talent, uh, on that roster. So anybody that would tell you otherwise is absolutely incorrect. Uh, Ian Book, terrible game by Ian Book. You know, look, Ian Book was a three-star quarterback coming out of high school. He looked like a three-star quarterback. Uh, he has, uh, really ever since, uh, the, the, the Cotton Bowl. I mean, uh, Clemson completely shook his confidence, which it happens. I mean, he's a young kid, right? So I mean, he's got to get it back. Uh, uh, Notre Dame plays New Mexico next, not this weekend, but after that. And then they go into Georgia. And I got to tell you guys, Notre Dame has absolutely no shot of beating Georgia at this point. Having watched this past game, having watched them against Louisville, seeing how young their defense is, uh, seeing the mistakes that they made, there's just no way it's going to happen. I, I can think of maybe two or three guys on Notre Dame's team that are as good or on par uh, with Georgia. I just don't see it happening. Uh, to be honest with you, I, I think it's probably going to be a blowout, uh, which for me is really going to sting. Uh, 45 to something, 45 to 17, some somewhere in that range. I, I think it's going to be really, really bad. Uh, Notre Dame found out today that it lost Jafar Armstrong, really the best running back on the team, really the only one that can, that can do much uh, in the running back position. He got hurt really on the first series of the game. It's Louisville. He's out for the next two months. I mentioned this last week, Cole Komet, number one tight end is out. Michael Young, one of the number one uh, receivers is out. Kevin Austin is another wide receiver. He's out because he's suspended. I'm not making excuses. I'm just telling you what's happening and why they're going to lose. Uh, even if they had all those pieces, it would have been very, very, very difficult. At this point, I just don't see it. Uh, and in fact, you know, in my mind, I'd said, again, I'd said this, either 10-2, and 9-3, and or 8-4, and four, and I said 8-4 and four would, would be disappointing. It is going to be disappointing, but I think that's what's going to happen. I see Notre Dame going 8-4 and four after having watched them this past week. They're just not there. Uh, I, don't, I don't even see them on the third tier of college football. Third tier would be top 15. I just don't see it. I see them, I don't know, top 25 probably, maybe 25th best team or something at this point. Just, again, based on one game, I get it. and Prove me wrong. I, I would love to see it. Uh, but I'm just going on what, you know, my gut feeling, thinking eight and four. All right, so let's talk about some of the upsets that happened this week and, and really just some of the games I was interested in and in, in, in seeing or some of the scores that I saw. These are in no particular order. I'm just kind of randomly wrote down some of the ones that I that I looked at and was just surprised by. Uh, I'm going to start with just a silly one. Central Arkansas beating Western Kentucky. I mean, it, what's funny is that Arkansas, you know, Arkansas is a pretty decent sized state, right? But it, it's funny because you've got Arkansas, Arkansas State. I think there might be a Southern Arkansas and then Central Arkansas, right? So, it's just, it's interesting when you see these teams. I have heard of Central Arkansas, but you don't really hear of them that often. But, you know, they beat Western Kentucky. Do you know who the head coach of Western Kentucky is? It's uh, uh, Helton's brother from Southern Cal. He's another Helton. So I got to tell you, I, I think both of them are going to be looking for assistant coaching jobs after this year. Brothers have to stick together, just like Petrino out at Idaho after getting beat 79-7. to 
uh, Petrino's brother, I, again, I can't remember his first name, but uh, 7097 at Penn State, he's going to be looking for another job as well, I think. That's, come on, you can't lose 7097. I don't care. That's, that's awful. Uh, Georgia State over Tennessee. I mean, look, I said this in my updates last year. I think Jeremy Pruitt is not the right fit at Tennessee. He said something last year, and, and again, I'll, I'll bring it up again here. He said something about, uh, I will recruit better players than the ones I've got here right now, and they're going to do what I need them to do. I'm paraphrasing. Something like that. Totally threw that team under the bus. You cannot do that. You cannot throw that team under the bus. That's exactly what he did. So I'm telling you, if I went there, there's no way in hell I'd want to play for this guy. I'd say, just get me in the transfer portal as quickly as possible. Get me out of here. And I got to tell you, after that game, I, I did see that two other guys went into the portal. It, it's kind of that kind of program in Tennessee right now. Wow. I mean, Georgia State, not good. I mean, not good at all. A Sun Belt team against an SEC team? Come on. That's ugh, not a good look. Uh, Boise over Florida State. You know, here's my thing about that. There's a lot of overreaction, I think, at this point about Florida State. And people were like, oh, they're going to be terrible again. They're going to be terrible again. I think most predicted Florida State to be 7-5. and five. I think they probably will be 7-5. and Because here's the thing. It, it's a team that, again, I was talking about Ian Book earlier, losing his confidence. This is an entire team that has lost their confidence. You need to get it back. So you don't just go from 5-7 and seven to Florida State of the early to mid-90s. It, it doesn't happen. You have to build it and get there again. And do I think they can do that under Taggart? Not really. But do I think they can get to seven wins? I do. Uh, you know... Again, Florida State is used to 11-1 and or 10-2. and do, do I think that Taggart's going to do that based on his body of work? No. What, why would I think that? Based on anything he's been able to do. But again, do I think he's going to make them respectable? Sure. Is that going to be enough for Florida State fans? No. So he'll be gone after four years. But I do think 7-5, and five, probably going to get there. But not surprised that they lost the game at all. That's, again, you got to get your confidence back. And, and hell, I mean, Boise's, a, Boise's tough. I mean, look, they're... I would not want to play Boise. Let's put it that way. Uh, they're they're definitely a tough out. Uh, North Carolina over South Carolina. You know, I mentioned last week, and you know, making me look stupid. I mentioned last week that Mac Brown was not a good hire at UNC. I, I still don't. I don't get it. I still don't think it's an incredible hire. I guess again, I, and I mentioned this. I guess he's stability hire, which is fine. Uh, am I going to make too much out of him beating South Carolina? Not really. Uh, out of his team beating South Carolina, not really. Um, I think most, again, predicted South Carolina to be 6-6. Six and six. They still could be 6-6, uh, 5-7, six and six, five and seven, not that much of a difference other than a bad bowl that you would go to. So uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I mean, you know, maybe Holinsky for South Carolina is going to bring something to the table that Bentley wasn't able to do. So let's see what happens this week. Uh, Auburn over Oregon. You know, I'll tell you, I, Oregon had that game in hand. I have absolutely no, I had no idea how Oregon or how Auburn came back and won that game. I'm serious. I mean, I'm watching that game and I'm like, what's happening here, Oregon? I mean, and, and look, obviously Auburn stepped it up defensively. I get that. I, you know, I watched the game. I saw what happened. But at the same time, I felt like Oregon just let it slip. Felt like they were very conservative in their game plan. Didn't really do the things they needed to do. The, uh, the, the, the fumble on, the, I think, the 10-yard line or whatever it was, that, that's, you're going to lose games like that. I mean, that, that's, what, that's what changes the momentum, shifts everything, and brings a team back into it when they shouldn't be. So, um, you know, it happens. I mean, really, they, they, they should have scored on that play, but they didn't. So I think that was really the, uh, the shift in the game. So uh, I, I, or, uh, Auburn did not come down and score. I think they scored, uh, kicked a field goal, I believe. Uh, but still, it's a, it's a momentum changer. Uh, Wyoming over Missouri. I mean, how fantastic is this? It's Wyoming. I mean, you, first of all, you never see Laramie on TV. You, you never do. And Wyoming used to just be a pit. I, I when I was a child, Wyoming was was really pretty good. They were kind of what Boise is now. They were maybe not as Boise ish, but they were good. They were like top twenty five good. I, I always loved them. The brown uniforms, the yellow. It was just hideous. It's in Wyoming, just a wasteland of nothingness. And they beat Missouri, and they're, they're storming the field. I mean, it's Missouri. Missouri's not even ranked, but I love it. It's an SEC team, and they beat them. Very exciting. I'm very, very happy for Wyoming fans. Apparently, they have them because they were they were in the stands. They were excited. 35,000 strong in War Memorial Stadium. Eh, it's very exciting times. Uh, my favorite game of the weekend, no doubt about it. Just fantastic. Uh, San Diego State beat Weaver State 6 to nothing. I mean, let me let me... Six. Six to nothing. 
I mean, come on, San Diego State. That's a problem. We're going to have to see what happens with them. I, 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 again, I think they were predicted to be okay this year, but six to nothing, not great. All right, guys, enjoy the uh, enjoy the game this weekend. Really looking forward to it. A lot of great ones. So uh, always going to be some surprises. So let's see what happens. All right, guys.